Hello everyone and welcome back to K-Tapes. Today we have some games that I want to show you uh, simply because first of all it's been extremely long since I've showed you games or anything gaming uh, and I think it's, uh, it's time. Uh, also because I have quite a lot of games to show you and all this stuff I bought um, I would say late last year and early this year uh, although I, I made I think something like two videos showing showing you like games um, since then only um, even though like I had like a whole bunch on the side that I didn't show you but anyway I think now it's the time um, so let's get down to it because uh, there's a lot all right so um, well I'm just gonna show you very quickly what I have so it's kind of all this all right so uh, grab a coffee, grab something to drink, something to eat, because this could be, uh, this could be long, uh, maybe even almost an hour. Uh, so let's start with the Xbox One games or Xbox Series X games. I mean, some of them are Series X, uh, like the first one I'm going to show you, which is Battlefield 2042. Uh, well, the reason I have two, of course, as you know, is, well, here there was like a freebie uh, when you purchased this one on kind of like day one, and it came with this uh, rather cool steelbook, uh, Battlefield 2042 steelbook, really cool. I didn't open it because I don't care too much about these things. It's, it's a bit gimmicky for me. Like, I try not to go with special editions and stuff like that when I buy games. I simply would go for the game. I mean, if there's like something like a steelbook on the side that is free, well, of course I'll take it. Uh, but I'm not gonna, you know, like start displaying these things. I'll just keep them wrapped, you know, keep them keep them aside, and uh, you know, so it's, it's a cool like curiosity. But that's it. Uh, so anyway, this came with this cool steelbook. Um, I bought it on the first day, uh, or at least the first few days, uh, and that's why I got this. And as you can see, something really cool I want to point out right here is you see these icons. Of course, these are the um, the ratings, uh, the South Korean ratings. So 28 years old, action, uh, language, whatever. And of course, you have like those other uh, ratings right here, which is quite unusual. Usually, you would only have this. Now, how come you have like other ones displayed on the box? Uh, my guess would be that maybe in asia uh, xbox is not doing too well i mean for the physical releases that is and that's why they're kind of like I, I don't know maybe putting like several asian releases under the same banner so like let's say you have like the rating for china or singapore or taiwan or whatever and then you have the korean one well you don't have japanese because japanese it's pretty much its own market well they're all their own markets Obviously, but I mean Japan is special. It, it, they're quite gamers right there, right? Uh, <clears throat> so they will have like a uh, different packaging, but maybe for some Asian countries they would do it all under the same banner. So that would, um, how to say, this would uh, tell why they went for like several, several ratings on the same cover from s different languages. Uh, anyway, it's really it's really unique. I think I, I've only seen that on Battlefield 2042 so far. I haven't seen that on uh, any other Xbox One releases or Xbox Series X releases. Uh, so this is the back cover. So once again, really cool. I really love those uh, Korean releases because, of course, they're getting harder to find. And uh, the thing is, in South Korea, uh, you can still find, of course, like original Xbox games uh xbox 360 games well xbox one and of course xbox series x i mean the new xbox um series s x uh they're getting like really hard to find and it's not all the games that are released in south korea some of them will have like the Euro european release which is really weird and then they'll just put a sticker on the plastic i think i showed you that before with uh the game um what was it called? Chival uh, Chivalry. It was Chivalry. Yeah, they had like a sticker on, this, on the cover covering up like the European 
like physical release, which was kind of odd. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the authentic South Korean releases are getting much harder to find day by day. Uh, and that is for like the last consoles right now. Okay, so this is Battlefield 2042. Uh, let's move on to another one. Uh, this one is still sealed. I didn't open it up. Uh, it's Recore. Recore, if you don't know, I think it's uh, it was made by a Japanese uh, game producer who happens to have done in the past one of the Ma Metroid Prime, I think. I, I don't know which one, like uh, one of the famous Metroid games. Um, sorry, I haven't played much of the uh, <laughs> Nintendo games in the past, so I, I can tell, but I think like I read a little bit about it and I think it was one of the uh, director of uh, Metroid Prime. So there was lots of anticipation for this title. I think it didn't do like too well. Uh, it was kind of like a bit under the radar, uh, but nonetheless, it was a very good um, addition to, for Xbox, like a very good, um, how to say, exclusive, uh, because this was not on any other console. So anyway, that was, of course, one of the reasons I, I bought it. And it wasn't too expensive. In South Korea, this cost me about uh, Manpalchanan, which is 18,001. And if you put that into US dollars, that would be about, I don't know, 16, 15 bucks. It's, it was like fairly cheap. So looking up to uh, try it out later on. Okay, let's move on now. I have a double bill I wanna show you, simply because it's the same uh, series. It's Dead Rising. So here we have Dead Rising 3, Dead Rising 4. Uh, for what I remember, again, I was a PS4 player at the time of the Xbox One, so I wasn't too much aware of what came out on Xbox One, except like the very first batch of games, stuff like Titanfall, which of course, being on PS4 was kind of like, ah, I would love to play that game, it looks so cool. Uh, but I do remember Dead Rising 3 was one of them and I really wanted to play that game because I love that series. I played it to death on the uh, Xbox 360, uh, the first one, the second one, and they were like this uh, off the record also. Those were like super cool to play. Also you could play co-op, I remember on the second game which was so fun. Anyway, good memories uh, and I did want to try part 3 and part 4. Uh, I think part four actually came out on the PS4 later on. Uh, so yeah, maybe they, they made a port eventually. I don't know like if they had like a timed exclusive or something like that. Uh, but I remember that, actually I remember and I was surprised to see it on the PS4 like after I sold my PS4, uh, which was like over a year ago. Uh, so anyway, I'm really happy I got it here on the Play, uh, PlayStation 4. <laughs> I see 4 here and I say PlayStation 4. On the Xbox One, uh, because of course it's backward compatible, I can play it on my Series X and it's the South Korean release, which is quite rare now. And it wasn't cheap, by the way. Uh, I, I bought it used, I think it was like over $30, which was kind of eh, but yeah, it is what it is in South Korea. Here you have the Apocalypse Edition for Dead Rising 3, it, I think it was the only release that we had in South Korea, uh, which is kind of a bit of a special edition, uh, which is cool. So uh, anyway, when I saw that, I jumped on it. I played it. Uh, I almost finished it. I think I'm at the very last mission. I kind of gave up for a bit, but I'm going to go back to it. It was really fun. Um, not really well received when it came out, but really cool to play. A very good surprise. So there you go. Dead Rising 3 and 4. Okay, now let's move on to something I purchased uh, not too long ago. I would say maybe about a month ago, uh, which is Killer Instinct Definitive Edition. Um, <clears throat> this one I know uh, there's like several releases. I mean, this is the very last one. I think it's the one that is worth a bit more money. Uh, but, but what's really cool about it, again, tell me if I'm wrong, put it down in the comments below. Uh, but the title is kind of, uh, it has like this foil, um, kind of like sparkling uh, thing to it, like finish, uh, which is so cool. I mean, it's, it, it feels like collectible, right? Uh, well, once again, tell me if you see or if you know any other releases that have this foil uh, lettering for the title. Because to my knowledge, I've only seen that with the Korean release. I think the other, like, I think the American release is only like red and that's it. Uh, so this is a very cool 
little plus makes it very unique again unless i'm wrong on the spine though it's it's just red there's nothing special <clears throat> and this is the back yeah so there you go you have the, the guy from halo right one of the bad guys so really fun release uh for the xbox one although it's free on game pass i know but i needed to have it if we look inside yeah you have like this little flyer if you like a free download additional character okay let's move on now we have um two more games those came from they're not south korean games they're japanese games but i purchased them off ebay uh simply because they're getting a bit harder to find now and like slightly pricier day by day uh, so we have Raiden 5 and we have Stranger of Sword City. Stranger of Sword City, uh, the appeal with this one, although it's, it's a Japanese exclusive, uh, is because it's all in English. So if you have a, um, an Xbox Series X or even Xbox One, you want to play this game, you want to import it, it's really cool because it's all in English. Uh, and if you're wondering what kind of game is this, uh, I looked it up a little bit before buying it. Well, it says RPG right here, but it's a dungeon crawler. Uh, I think a little bit like Bard's Tale, those kind of games back in the days. Um, so anyway, it was a must for me to purchase. Not something I think I'm going to dive in soon, because I have so many games to play, by the way. Uh, but something I'm really happy I secured and that is now in my collection before it goes up in prices and whatnot. Okay, and for Raiden 5, uh, well, this give, will give me a chance to hunt down Raiden 4 on the 360. And there's another Raiden, Raiden fighter, I uh, forgot, like there's a yellow jet on the car. Anyway, the title just uh, skipped here. Uh, but Raiden 5 is a, um, came out on the PS4 as well. I think it had like a really cool edition, but this is the only release they have for the Xbox and it's only released in Japan. Uh, so that makes it quite unique. Oh, and by the way, this is a special edition. It doesn't, like, there's nothing that tells you from the cover, but if you look on the back, the only thing that tells you this is the special edition version compared with the regular one is this right here, uh, which I believe says something, 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 CD. So yeah, it comes with the CD soundtrack. Uh, so I guess this is what it says right here. And if we open it up, you'll say, well, there's only one disc. It's because the two discs are uh, one on top of each other with, with a slim um, paper not so that they don't you know, rub against each other and make scratches, which is really nice detail to add. Uh, so yeah, this is the special edition of Raiden 5. Super good quality, super nice uh, quality. I mean, um, not a beat up copy. Yeah, all right. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the 360 games uh, with one game I didn't know had a South Korean release. Uh, so when I saw that, I was like, oh my god, wow, I want to buy it. And I was expecting like high price, but here we go. This is Ridge Racer. Well, my god. Ridge Racer 6. Ridge Racer 6, which came out on the 360. Uh, I know this, I used to have, by the way, the um, North American release back in the days, but this is the South Korean release. Uh, and I was gonna say, yeah, I, when I saw that this was at the game convention, uh, I, expect, I expected it to be quite expensive, maybe $30, $40 or something, because this North American copy went up in prices when this was announced to be um, backward compatible. Like just, I think it was in the very last batch of games that has been, um, uh, backward compatible and announced as backward compatible. So anyway, this one uh, I thought it would be expensive, but I only paid ten thousand won for it, which is about eight dollars. Uh, so totally blew my mind out. I, I jumped on it, and of course my fear sometimes with South Korean releases, well any releases for that matter, is that I always, you know, think the the spine may have some sun fade like right here the, the green will all be like blue um, but it wasn't the case for this one and it's such a beautiful release beautiful copy maybe the box is a bit beat up on the on the bottom here but the sleeve is clean everything so really happy about this great addition for the collection 
Okay, next we have uh, Divinity 2 Ego Dragonis. Uh, I've never played that game. Uh, such a beautiful cover, artwork and everything. South Korean release, I don't know. I think it's different from the North American release, you tell me. Um, always this is something when you buy South Korean release or any other releases in the world you always expect to have a really cool cover uh, for the artwork or something different than the North American one to make it you know stand out a little bit in your collection uh, so this one does stand out it's beautiful so here is the back as you can see so yeah, all in Hangul obviously because it's Korean so, oh, by the way, there's a, a thing with South Korean games. Uh, it's always written like made in Singapore. So most of their games were made in Singapore. I don't know if like the discs are printed there or the sleeves are printed there or, or, or whatnot. I, I would think maybe the whole package is, is made there. Uh, anyway, but it says for Korea only. So this is how you know it's only Korean. Of course, if you don't know uh, that this is like South Korean, I mean, Korean write up, you know, writing. Hangul, uh, well, you just look it up in the corner right here. Um, so yeah, Divinity 2, Ego, Dragonis. Okay, next we have a game that I've been um, looking for for quite a bit. I've seen it uh, pop up on a few occasions in South Korea, in like stores in Seoul and so on. Uh, but uh, I don't know, the price was not right. Or like I said, the spine was sun faded. So I was like, nah, I'll pass. Uh, but I finally, finally found one good copy, which is this one. Um, so this is Condemned Criminal Origins. And why I wanted this one so bad, because, you know, there's a part two as well. Well, it's because this one is backward compatible. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wanted to try it on my Series X and play it um, in the near future. So here you have it. Oh, this is the back cover by the way i buy these uh, little sleeves here they see like plastic sleeve it's not sealed of course it's just like a yeah just a sleeve that i put all my games in just to keep them clean keep them away from humidity or whatever uh just protective sleeve right because uh you know you want to take care of your collection at some point Okay, next, another one that I picked up at the game convention is uh, the King of Fighters 12. Uh, this series, for some reason, especially 12, 13, and I think 14, uh, they go for quite a lot of money in South Korea. But, well, by that I mean like 50 bucks maybe, but I mean, I know these titles, especially this one, I think in, in North America is like maybe $15. Uh, but here's like almost like double i think i paid 35 for this one to get the south korean release i don't know koreans are really into the fighting games they're into soccer football if you prefer uh, but the fighting games are always um, something that people collect kind of like with vhs tapes people will go for the horror games uh, the horror movies uh, for games fighting games well horror games as well survival horror are always like you know the genres that people prefer and for that matter they'll be a bit more expensive anyway this one was a bit more expensive but i'm really happy i gra i grabbed it up because it's in top shape as you can see uh disc is is minty oh that's one thing by the way even though you have like the sun fade sometime and stuff like that gotta give that to koreans their cds are always or like 98 percent of the time like minty okay they're like super clean uh so that is really cool it's just a question of the um, the box the box could be a bit beat up can have some sun fade because you know when it's displayed on the on the shelves you have the fluorescent and it fades the the spines and stuff which sucks uh, but the games themselves are most of the time always in great shape it's, it's the last thing you need to worry about uh, so there you go uh, this is uh, king of fighters 12 which is quite rare in south korea okay uh, next one we have Conan Conan uh, nothing special I picked this up it at my local shop in Nambu uh, I think I paid uh, something like six dollars five dollars wasn't too expensive um, it's in decent shape uh, and the only reason I picked it up is because it's backward compatible and again I will privilege the backward compatible games over the other ones 
simply because you can play them, obviously. Uh, but the more I'll, you know, grab the games I want, I think eventually I'll just go on for like the other titles I don't have, which are not backward compatible, but I just want to complete my collection. And very last of everything, I'll grab the sports games because those are like, you'd call it the bloatware, the, the trash games. You don't want the, the, the ones you just do, um, the door uh, holders, whatever. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, this is Conan for uh, Xbox 360. Okay, next, this is the very last Xbox 360 game I'll show you that is open, that is not sealed. So we have Fear 2 Project Origin. Um, this is a series that has just been announced as backward compatible. So Fear 1, 2, 3 and Fear Files are now backward compatible. And if I'm not mistaken, I think 2 or 3 or 1 and 3 and the files are only backward compatible through the discs. And I think only two is like on, on the game shop. Or I could be wrong, they could be all like backward compatible, but only with the discs. But I, I, anyway, bottom line, I know like a majority of them are only backward compatible, only if you have the disc. So you cannot download that on the game store. Uh, so it's another reason to grab this ASAP um, before they go up in price. So there you go. This is Fear. Apparently it's a very good series, but I've never tried this. Even back then, um, when I had a 360, it was not like a title I would go for. I don't know, uh, maybe I should have, but anyway, now I can, uh, I have it in my collection. I can try it anytime I want, which is so cool. And this is the South Korean version. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the sealed Xbox 360 games. So first off, we have Fear 3, because I just had Fear 2 right before. And this one is sealed, as you can see. Uh, this, believe it or not, uh, cost me 3,000 won, Samchanon, which is about uh, $2.20 or something, maybe $2.50. Super cheap, because uh, I know this went up in price like $60. $70 when it was announced to be backward compatible so people went crazy and now of course the price crashed down again and I think now it's around like maybe 35 still I mean still decent money but 35 by that I mean like an open copy a sealed copy would probably fetch a little bit more uh, so this is a South Korean release it's really again beautiful copy uh, all uh, clean and sealed <clears throat> And um, yeah, a great addition to the collection and of course to the series because now I have part two, part three. Uh, I didn't show it to you because they're not the Korean releases and I think they don't exist is the Fear Files. Like I said, this one I have it, but it's the American version. I have Fear One, which is also the US version, which I found in Korea, by the way. Uh, the store I always go to happened to have that. I guess someone like a foreigner like myself just dropped it there back in the days to sell it and they had it in stock. Or they just ordered it for like, I don't know, some some customers who never played the first one. But really happy I found this one. I didn't have to, you know, go on eBay or whatnot. Okay, next is another $3 game that I found sealed. And it's Injustice Gods Among Us, another fighting game. I'm not a fan of fighting games, to be honest. I, I like to collect them. They look so cool, but I hate playing those games. Uh, I would say the last, uh, actually, I don't like playing them because I suck at them. So maybe it's a good excuse. Uh, the only <laughs> the only one I used to really love because I was good at it was Battle Arena Toshinden on the PlayStation One. So uh, it's been quite a while, right? So, but after that, I didn't, you know, go into any fighting games. It was really not my style. But I kind of like looking at people playing them. It's it's kind of. Uh, I wouldn't say it's an art, but it's something when you have like a real like good player playing the, these games and that's really good at it, at them. Uh, so there you have it, Injustice. I think this came out on Xbox One, uh, like a reprint for Xbox One, just like obviously uh, Injustice 2, I'm not too sure. So this is not super appealing, but hey, at, at like $2.50 sealed, uh, you know, it's a take. All right, next we have another game I've never played, but yet another game that I paid about $3 is Binary Domain. And this is again a sealed game. 
This was released by Sega, South Korean release right there. Another 18 year old um, game, supposedly. Never played it. it, it looks a bit shitty. I think it didn't get like really good, re uh, really good comments or really good reviews, uh, but I would be tempted to try it someday. I mean, why not? So there you have it. Binary Domain. Okay, next. Uh, this one is a bit more expensive. I think it was a big $7 or 6 <laughs> But we have Medal of Honor Airborne. Another one that I went for. Uh, I mean, it could have been a bit more expensive. I didn't care because this one is backward compatible. Just like Binary Domain, I think. Uh, so I love these uh, backward compatible titles. Uh, and this is uh, this is another one for the collection, another one that I, I can play later on. But then, of course, you're gonna say, "Hey, but why would you open this up?" Uh, and it's for your collection. Usually, some people keep want to keep those sealed games for the value and so on. You're absolutely right, and I will keep them sealed. Uh, but the shop that has those had a whole bunch of them. I think they're running low on stock, so maybe I should go there, buy myself another copy, and you know for playing and just keep this one sealed. I mean, at $3, it's it's kind of a no-brainer, right? If it was $50, it will be like, nah. Uh, but for, uh, for $3, I mean, I can buy another one. Uh, although this one was six, anyway, six, seven. So there you go. Um, Medal of Honor Airborne. I think it was one of the last games in the Medal of Honor series. I think there was another one after that, but that was it. Like there was no Medal of Honor for like the subsequent systems like the PS4 or the Xbox One. Not that I remember actually. So I could be wrong, but uh, those are the last ones I remember. Okay, next, uh, another really cool title. This one I really want to play it and it sucks because it's sealed and it would break my heart to uh, <laughs> open it up because it's it's a bit rare. It's Max Payne 3 and that goes for the other Max Paynes. I'm looking for Max Payne 1 and 2. They never, I don't think they came out in South Korea. I've never seen the South Korean releases of them. Uh, so I guess I'll have to go on eBay or some Facebook groups and try to find someone who can sell me the first one and the second one in good shape, please. Uh, but a Max Payne 3, uh, there's a sealed copy. Maybe I'll try to find like an opened up copy. Uh, but yeah, this is the Korean release by Rockstar. And if you notice right here, sorry, I'll try to kind of uh, move it like this. If you, I don't know if you notice, but the title is kind of embossed. So you have like the Rockstar Games Presents Max Payne 3, and it's all like embossed. I don't know about the North American release, if it has that kind of embossed finish. Uh, you tell me in the, down, down below in the comments, uh, but I think this makes it I mean, if it's the case, if the South Korean release is the only one to have that, it makes it a little bit like standing out from the other releases in the world, which is really cool. It's always a plus uh, if you're a game collector like myself. So there you go, Max Payne 3, the South Korean release. Been on the spine. Beautiful copy. Okay, uh, next, <clears throat> another game that I actually want to play, <laughs> but this one is another sealed one. Actually cost me eight dollars but the guy only had one copy so eh, can I go back there and buy another one because that was the last one he had and it's driver San Francisco um, I was a big fan of the driver games uh, I've played them back on the PS2 driver 1 driver 2 I've never played driver 3 because apparently it sucked and when driver 3 driver 3 3 came out uh, I think also um, GTA came out more or less around the same time. My memory is a bit foggy here, but I think that's what happened. So there was no no reason to play uh, Driver 3 when you have uh, GTA 1 back in those days. I mean, come on. Uh, but still, I would be curious to try it out. Uh, San Francisco apparently was a bit better than um, Part 3. Uh, so I'd, I'd be curious to try it out. And I think they incorporated also, like you could get out of the car, uh, but I think that was in part two as well, if I'm not mistaken. You can, like if your, your car was all wrecked, you can get out of the car, walk a little bit, grab another car and go on. Uh, but it was not really meant for that. It was really just to change the car. Uh, anyway, so really fun game. I found memories of those games. Um, 
but driver San Francisco I would love to try it out but let's see uh, so maybe I'll anyway if I find a cheap copy on this on this side I'll grab it okay uh, next we have another cheap copy uh, again I, I buy I, I didn't buy them because oh they're sealed it's just they came up sealed and they were super cheap so for me it was a no-brainer right uh, but this is uh, Lord of the Rings War in the North, uh, early 2000, uh, no, sorry, this is uh, Xbox 360, so that would be a bit later, but yeah, of course, because of the movies, um, Lord of the Rings was so huge, uh, and they came up with this one, um, Warner Brothers, so what else to say, I don't know, I've never played those games, I don't know if they were good or not, um i just remember the shadow of mordor's that was really good uh but these older ones the 360 ones and the x original xbox lord of the ring games i've never played any of them i i just remember there was a bunch of them maybe five or six uh i don't i don't know uh and they're not backward compatible so this one will stay sealed for now because <laughs> i cannot play it i don't have a 360 uh console i have an original xbox console and i have a three uh an Xbox Series X console, but I don't have the 360 console, so I cannot, you know, just plug it in and try it out. Uh, anyway, but you tell me if it was a great game or not. Okay, and the last seal game we have for the uh, Xbox 360 console is something I bought recently simply because uh, I was fond of this game and it was so cool. And it's No More Heroes. Again, it's, by the way, it's sealed, but I just put a plastic on top. As you can see, and because it comes with this big manual, this big booklet right here, this thick booklet. And this is the thing with some of the Korean releases. When they have like a Japanese game like this, most of the time the game was still in Japanese. There was no Korean translation in the game. Just they put like the, well, some Hangul on the title. They put the Korean title here. They would put like the, um, the ratings, the, the Korean ratings, uh, but they would not translate the game there, there was there would be no no translation whatsoever so they would only have this big booklet that would come with the game for you to follow i mean if you're korean um so yeah i played this game back when it came out and i ordered the japanese release of it uh, i can't remember if it was in english and that was like the big appeal for me to buy it i think I, it had some english anyway i think it woo, my tripod I think they were like the menus, uh, but yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit far in my memory. I don't, I don't quite remember, uh, but I think it had English. Anyway, so this is the South Korean release. Uh, it came out much later. I, I, I don't know if it was a year later or something or several months, uh, because of course I would have gone for the Korean release at the time because they were way cheaper than the Japanese import, of course. Uh, so anyway down the road anyway now I'm collecting those games and I just thought hey this is uh, down memory lane you know like nostalgia so I, I bought it back and it was sealed so I'm like why not and I think it was like $20 so yeah there you go okay uh, now because uh, we're done with all these Xbox ones and the Xbox 360 games let's dive into the original Xbox games and let's go with the double bill to make this video not last like three hours uh, so first of all, we have the wonderful Mech Assault series. Um, I've never played those simply because I never had an Xbox, uh, an original Xbox at the time. I had a PS2, so those games were, you know, off the table. Uh, but I've heard a lot of good things about these games. Apparently they were really, really good. Um, so yeah, Mech Assault 1. This is the Korean, they're both, well, obviously, they're both the Korean releases. Here you go. So here, Mech Assault 1. Sadly, like many people complain, but they're not backward compatible. And people were like, why you didn't make them backward compatible? You know, they're like the Microsoft IPs and stuff. I don't know, maybe it's about, maybe they have like some music um, with the, uh, the copyrights or something. And that's why they couldn't, you know, port them to um, backward compatible catalog. I don't know, but let's hope in the future they will be able to do so otherwise i guess i'll have to um you know take out my old original xbox and you know try them with the uh, old hardware uh, so yeah this is mech assault one 
And for Mech Assault 2, uh, the cool thing also with this one, again, it didn't come sealed or anything, is it still has the uh, Xbox Live like sticker, like promotional sticker on the cover. Um, so yeah, like sometimes what I do is I would swap the, uh, the clamshell, the box, because it, it would be like beat up or something or dirty. So I would just throw it away, buy a cheap game for $2 and just swap the box. Uh, but with this one, I don't want to do it because I want to keep this sticker here. It's much more original. But thankfully, the box is super clean and everything. So there's no, I mean, it's like a little bit, you know, but that's nothing. I mean, it's, it's on the back. It doesn't really affect anything. It's really clean. Uh, <clears throat> the only thing, though, this is a special edition. I don't know about in the US. I think there was only one edition and it was a special edition with two discs. Uh, this disc is super clean. This one is got a bit of scratches. So I'll need to find maybe another copy just to swap this disc because I love to have, I mean, those games are not that expensive, right? So right now it's cool to, you know, collect stuff that is in top shape. I mean, those games are not like 40 years old. So there's no reason to, you know, go for like beat up stuff. I know some people would just grab some like a bunch of games in a um, in a garage sale regardless you know it was like ten dollars they get like 20 games yeah I, I understand that but I mean I would prefer to spend more money get top quality top shape games rather than have a whole bunch of them and they're all beat up or missing like manuals and stuff so anyway that's the way I tend to uh, approach collecting and I do that also for videotapes or whatever I collect uh, thankfully, I don't collect too many things, by the way. <laughs> so I do that for the games. All right, so these were Mech Assault 1 and 2. Next, we have uh, a classic, which is Forza Motorsport. Uh, so this is the first Forza. Again, you guys tell me. Oh, there's a bit of uh, plastic here. See what I mean? Sometimes there's these things, but the, the sleeve is clean. Um, so yeah, you guys tell me, because Forza, if you look at the North American release and some other releases in the world, um, you see how it's like like shiny, silvery foil cover. Um, and I know there are two releases of Forza in South Korea. There's this one with the foil cover silver um, finish. And there's the other one, which is just like plain white or like a, just a normal release. Let's call it a normal release. I don't know if this was part of a package, if it was, it came with a console or something. Although you, usually when it's the case, you would see like a not for sale or something like that because it's part of a, bun, a bundle. Um, but I don't see anything like this here. So I don't know. You guys tell me, all right? Uh, so if you've ever seen a release that is like foil, like the silver finish, like this one. Um, yeah. So there you go. This is Forza Motorsport. Like you can see it's in top shape. Oh, it's a bit of a tiny dent here, but it's not a big deal. All right. Okay. Uh, next. We have a couple of crappy games, <laughs> by that I mean stuff like Blood Wake, I don't know. Uh, I remember seeing that when I was, a, was a younger, I was like, what is this stuff? It looked cool, but not cool enough to try it out or to buy that. Uh, yeah, anyway, just like racing games with some shooting. Maybe it's really fun, by the way, I don't know. I think it's the kind of game that would appeal uh, the, the Metal Jesus guy. I think he's into that stuff, uh, probably talked about it in the past and maybe like you know gave it a thumb thumbs up way up i don't know but for me it's not really super appealing i mean to each to each his own you know to each is is genre um so yeah anyway uh this is blood wake a uh, beautiful south korean release with the manual and everything i need to find like a little plastic sleeve to put these anyway okay next we have uh, brothers in arms Road to Hill 30. Uh, so a uh, first-person shooter. I, I like kind of like first-person shooter. If you ask me what, what is your favorite genre because you keep bitching about like you don't like fighting games, you don't like those boat racing games, you don't like racing games, what do you like? Uh, I do enjoy first-person shooters simply because it's the kind of games you just jump in, you frustrate for like 20 minutes, you put it down and you go do something else. Uh, no, but 
uh, I don't know, I, I, I like to be pumped and, and angry at the game, so I kind of tend to go with first-person shooters, I guess. Uh, no, I don't know, it's just I love, I love multiplayer games, and I just think they're really uh, competitive and fun to play. I have, of course, I like the uh, open world games as well. Again, it depends on the mood, right? Like, I, I really enjoyed, like, a few weeks ago, I was playing um, uh, No Man's Sky. It's And it's such a zen game. There's no... You're not, you don't... You're not angry at this game. You know, you just play and it's it goes as it goes and it's, it's fun. Anyway, let's go back to this. Uh, Brothers in Arms, the South Korean game uh, release, I mean. Uh, published by Ubisoft and of course Gearbox. I mean two big companies back in the days. Ubisoft was the king, now they're like, eh. Uh, so I guess this game is perhaps decent. I don't know, I've never tried it. Anyway, sadly it's not backward compatible though. Okay, next we have a game that would be probably not made today with, you know, the whole woke agenda and stuff like that that's happening in the world. I mean, that's happening in North America in, in Europe uh, we have the game called whacked uh, well let me tell you why I think such a thing is well you look at the cover you have this cute little sexy cartoonish character first of all well they'll probably hide here and you know make it a little bit smaller uh, <laughs> we shouldn't have like a big cleavage or something uh, anyway it looks just like a cool little ca cartoon game platformer Nothing offensive, but in today's world, this would probably be offensive and stuff like this would probably be way too offensive. Uh, I found it really cool. It just gave me a laugh. I, I mean, I started laughing when I saw this, when I opened it up. Anyway, so this is whacked. Um, I think it's, um, I don't think it's a cheap game. I think it goes like it's starting to go a bit up in price, maybe because of... Uh, it's the kind of game that is, you know, marks a generation, you know, like it's, this is an era, you know, like, like I said, you don't really see that kind of stuff today. Okay, um, next we have another game that is starting to become a bit pricier is Kung Fu Chaos. I think it's like a 35 US dollar game, more or less. Uh, this is a gorgeous copy once again, no sun fade. This is a South Korean release. I like to say that even though you know it's just like a, you know it's the theme of this video those south korean releases because no one is showing them i mean i check everywhere on youtube i didn't see many people showing south korean games so i like to just keep repeating that i guess uh so yeah microsoft studios strangely this is not backward compatible you would think you know it's microsoft studio why didn't they put that back in their catalog again maybe some copyright issues with some some of the songs, who knows. Okay, next we have another game. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's called Battle Engine. Uh, you see like big robots, like an army. It reminds me of the um, Earth Defense Force. Uh, maybe it's the same style, I don't know. But this was put up by Atari. Uh, is it any good? Uh, it does look decent. I mean, for an original Xbox game of that era, I mean, it does look decent, but is it fun? I don't know. I just know that I really like the Earth Defense Force series. Like, if I can find, like, I think there were like three or four that came out on the 360 system, I would love to get them. Uh, simply also because they're, the three of them are backward compatible. So that would be so cool to dive back in at some point. Although they're really hard to play games I mean they're unforgivable <laughs> uh, but they're fun games anyway so this is battle engine next we have spider-man for some reason back in uh, I think April May something like that the spider-man games uh, became very expensive uh, maybe because there was a movie that came out or some some reason but all the spider-man games I think except this one all went up in prices uh, they were like some of them like almost were like a hundred dollars I think like the one on Xbox 360 that was ported on the Xbox one reached like a hundred bucks uh, which is a bit of nonsense but hey because um, they're not too good games uh, but anyway yeah this one is this is the Korean version I uh, picked it up I think it was five bucks maybe a bit more because the uh, the seller thought like oh it's spider-man must be expensive or some some reason whatever but it was it was less than ten dollars that's for sure 
So yeah, Spider-Man. Okay, next, another weird game, racing, future, futuristic uh, setup, whatever. It's called Quantum Redshift. Um, again, I've heard good things about this one. I think it was again from uh, Metal Jesus Rock. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of like his channel, by the way. Uh, yeah, so apparently it's a decent game. Maybe because also from that era, it was a well-received game, a well-made game. I don't know. Uh, but when I saw it, I was like, hey, I kind of remember this one. I'll pick it up. And it was fairly cheap also. So, and it's in top shape. So this is Quantum Redshift for the original Xbox. Korean release. Okay, next. Oh my God, uh, this is uh, this is a big one. Uh, and also, by the way, this one is South Korea cost uh, a lot of money. By that I mean, it, I think it's around seventy dollars if you want to buy that from like a, a store with like a retro uh, game store. But I found that one in the flea market in Seoul, in the, actually where I buy my videotapes usually, where I go hunting. Uh, so I was like really surprised because it's quite rare that you'd see uh, games uh, like Xbox games, PS2 games, whatever, like that era games uh, or any games for that matter in the flea market. But there was like one old guy that had like an original Xbox uh, console. I've seen like a couple of them. They're not that expensive. They're usually $20. Uh, but he had like a couple games and usually... You know, the games that come with the console is always the same thing. You know, it's a FIFA game or a winning 11 game or, or, or a basketball game. Anyway, it's, it's the kind of games you don't want. Uh, shovelware, right? So, but he had Otogi. Uh, and oh my God, this game, um, I wanted to, you know, grab it for such a long time. And it's been added to the backward compatible uh, catalog. So one more reason to go for it. Um, also, the second game, I don't know if it has a South Korean release. I don't know. Uh, but the second game is, is really expensive. Right now, I think it's in the $150, maybe $200. I don't know, but it's really expensive. Uh, this one is a bit cheaper. Also, two things about this one. Um, well, three things. The cover is really unique. I think it does usually what happens with the South Korean releases, they'll go for the Asian release. You know, they'll go for the Japanese cover. They'll just put the Japanese cover, put some Korean and call it a day. Uh, but for this one, they, they went for a different artwork with different colors and everything. I think the Japanese one is more like pink. Could be wrong here, uh, but this one is blue. It's super unique. Uh, so this is something that goes like for this release. Also the writing, Otogi, it's like Otogi, but it, it looks like Ut. Anyway, it's weird. Uh, why they did that, I don't know, but it's one more thing. Uh, also, uh, if you look at the publisher, it's YBM. So YBM, the thing with them is that they used to be a very, very big company in South Korea that was specialized into, for example, like publishing books, especially like English books, like for learning English, like the, all, the whole TOEIC uh, thing and so on, but they, they were also publishing books on the side. Uh, they were publishing DVDs, they were publishing games. Uh, they also had like some VCDs at some point and even some VHS tapes. Uh, so like pretty much every type of medias, they were publishing that stuff. Um, the thing though is that they didn't have like that many games that I know of. I know like there were like some uh, CD games for like PC, uh, but for like Xbox games, I don't know many of them that were released by YBM. So this is so cool for this release right here. Another thing is, uh, if you look at the top, it says, of course, From Software, which is the company that developed the game. Uh, and for, from my knowledge, I think it's the only release, uh, perhaps in the world, I hope, because this would make this release even more unique. Uh, but I think it's one of the very rare releases that uh, mention From Software on the cover. Other copies, I think they would say on the back, but on the very cover, at least they put From Software, which is really cool. You can see it on the back as well, I think. Uh, let me check. Maybe no, actually. Well, you have YBM, which is the publisher. Anyway, uh, also the game being a Japanese uh, game, a release. Uh, I mean, this one they have, um, because in YBM, they, like I said, they're translating books, uh, stuff for English uh, and so on. 
Uh, in the booklet, you have the names of the people that worked, of course, at YBM on the translation of this game. Uh, so, which leads me to think that, you know, they put uh, the people in-house that were, you know, I don't know, uh, translating perhaps Japanese books and things like that, worked on translating this game. Um, which is really cool for like a local um, release of that game. So there you go, this is Otogi. Uh, Korean release once again beautiful copy except for this little dent here um, yeah otherwise it's, it's not a big deal I mean it's a big deal for me because I'm very picky <laughs> with my uh, my collection but for me the most important thing is that there's absolutely no sun fade on the spine the booklet is there the disc is rather pretty clean uh, so yeah unless I mean until I find a better copy but I'm not gonna pay $70 that's for sure but if I do find another one cheap and I'm very lucky yeah I'll go for it the next one is another very rare game that I found and it's Dino Crisis 3 I think the North American release of this goes for some quite good money and it's not really easy to find uh, I, well, obviously there's like a Japanese release. I think there's probably even like a PAL release. It's probably been released pretty much everywhere because this is, uh, it used to be like a big series back then, like first one, second one. Uh, the third one was terrible apparently, but it was an, an Xbox exclusive. So only for that, it's really cool to have. Um, you know what I said about Otoki before that, you know, the cover is very unique. Uh, they have like the, the the shades of blue, which I think the Japanese one is pink. Uh, North American one has different color as well. Well, here uh, the thing is with this release is they totally took the Japanese uh, artwork and they just put it on the Korean one and they just added, you know, the title in Korean right there. Uh, other than that, it's pretty similar to the Japanese one. So here it is. Well, you have the Hangul right, right here, the Korean writing. Um, yeah, so this is the South Korean release of Cry uh, Crisis 3, Dino Crisis 3. Very rare in South Korea, very, very happy to own this one. I didn't know it existed until I saw it a couple months ago, back in May. Okay, next, uh, something I think I showed you before. Speaking of upgrade, we have Conquer, which I also found at the game show. Uh, I think I paid uh, like 12,000 won for this one, which is about like $9. Uh, about the same price as the previous copy. I think I paid 10,000 won, just like slightly a bit more. But anyway, uh, it's an upgrade because the one I had was sun faded right here it has a like baby blue like fade which like really bothered me i still have it if someone wants the south korean version i can sell that one but this one will definitely go in my collection because it's uh, it's near mint it's not sealed i mean the guy kept the sticker there which is cool i left it there as well so uh but yeah this is Conquer, uh, another like usually very good title. And this one is backward compatible. I know it's featured, I think, on the um, uh, the, connection, uh, the collection by the Rare collection, uh, where they feature like a whole bunch of their games. But it's really cool to have the original South Korean, original Xbox release uh, from back in the days. Okay, next, uh, another like uh, minor title called Tao Feng, Fist of the Lotus. Um, nothing special about this. Well, it seems like it was a Microsoft Studio release. I've never played this game, like I said, because I've never owned an original Xbox back in the days. I had the PS2. So I don't know about this game. Is it good? Uh, it looks all right. I mean, from the graphics perspective, but is it like the gameplay good? Any good? I don't know. Uh, maybe you can tell me. Uh, so yeah, not, not much to say about this one other than it was fairly cheap. I grabbed it and it's in top shape. So for me, top shape, disc is clean, like I said, manual is there, uh, no sun fade, very, very important. Uh, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's a grab. Okay, next, I have two games of the same series, I mean, although one is a spin-off of the other. So we have Dead or Alive, uh, Extreme Volleyball beach volleyball and we have dead or alive 3 uh dead or alive 3 doesn't pop up very often in south korea by the way it's the same visual as the japanese cover the same artwork um so been released by tecmo but this is again the south korean 
version. Beautiful. Found that in Yongsan. By the way, Yongsan is dying as we speak. I think I'm gonna go there this weekend, maybe do a little video about the place uh, before it's gone. Kind of just like as a, a memory of the good old days, I guess. Anyway, uh, back to this game. Yeah, I've never played it. Not a fighting game uh, fan. Uh, although, I mean, it looks really cool. I would love to have, um, you know, the box set with part one and two. It used to be everywhere. I found it a couple of times, but the box, the, the cardboard box that is housing the two, um, the two games is always all beat up. So anyway, I, I always like give up instead of just having the two games just uh, with the, uh, the plastic box, I would love to have the, uh, the cardboard box that goes with them because, you know, it's part of a set. You, you want to have the whole thing. So anyway, this is um, Dead or Alive 3. And for uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball with the bouncing physics, right? So cool. Uh, I used to see this game uh, like all the time when I would go to Nambu and so on like uh, where they sell games but it was always the Japanese versions. I was really surprised to find the Korean version exist. Uh, after that I saw it like a couple times maybe three four times I saw it uh, but this one is like super mint. I mean the, the store that had this one had like a few copies like maybe three or four copies so I, I just went for the best one. I think I even swapped the the manual to you know get the best manual uh, and it cost me like somewhere around five dollars it was super cheap um, yeah I would I by the way I would love to get uh, the one that came out on uh, Xbox 360 which was Dead or Alive Extreme 2 I think that's, that's the name uh, that was the name I think uh, it's also a bit hard to find uh, so yeah would love to find it and eventually it's on my radar okay uh, Another game that is a bit rare is Blinks 2. Uh, I don't have Blinks 1. I think the first game is backward compatible. The second one isn't, sadly, and it's the only one I own. So, eh, sucks for that, but it's a rare game. I think in the States it goes for like quite some money as well, maybe $30, $40. Uh, usually when some people sell a whole bunch of games and this one is in the pile, uh, people, you know, want to buy games, they usually just jump on that one. Uh, perhaps because it's a bit more rare and maybe it's a decent game. I don't know. Never played it um, What else do I have to say about this one? Yeah, I mean, yeah, here is the title in Korean. It's really cool Yeah, the only thing is as you can see you see the side What I mean by the Sun fade See it's it's green when you, it's blue when it's like baby blue like this. It's yeah well, the rest of us is a spine, like, it's hard to tell, but it, it really shows with this. And this, what, you know, it's hard to, um, I mean, it's annoying with the Xbox is the, the green will go off, like, really quickly with the sunlight. So try to keep it in a darker room, put, like, in the sunlight directly, and um, you'll keep your Xbox games, like, pretty uh, near mint for a long time. So anyway, this one I picked it up, like I said, because it was, first, because it was cheap two because the rest of the game is in top shape uh, and also because it's very rare uh, so yeah until I find an upgrade copy for this one the next one I have here is a sealed game so the, all the rest of the games that I'm going to show you today are all sealed Xbox one uh, original Xbox games so we have full spectrum warrior this is once again a backward compatible game I found that in the flea market in Seoul um, this was, I think, 3001. So for a sealed game, I mean, it's really cool, especially for the backward compatible ones. Uh, I may uh, head back to that place, maybe buy another couple copies. Uh, who knows? We'll see. It's just a shame, you know, that it's not like the, the ones that are super rare or hard to find or pricey that comes up like sealed. It's, it's the ones that are, yeah, people don't care about. But anyway, I mean, it's, it's always good. If you're collecting, you can't be too like regarding about these things. You, you need to pick up what comes by and, you know, build, build your collection that way. So, yeah. Okay, the next one, uh, speaking of upgrades, uh, this one I picked it up. It does have a bit of sun fade. You can tell like the first X of Xbox is very green and then it fades. I found that online, uh, sucks. Um, I think there's a place I can still find this for cheap. And by cheap, I mean 2001, which is $1.60 <laughs> sealed. 
so I'll go for it and I'll just cannibalize the box for this one that I mean the, the plastic box and you know swap it for uh, another game that is a bit beat up anyway uh, speaking of this game Unreal Championship I would really love to find the second game because the second game is backward compatible but I think it never came out in South Korea unless proven wrong I've never found it I've never seen it I've only seen Unreal Championship uh, one and I've seen Unreal I uh, forget the title but the one that was on Xbox 360 uh, yeah sorry I forgot the title but those two only not the second game that came out on original Xbox okay next one again coming from the flea market was SSX on tour that was a big surprise because um, the SSX games I love them they're really fun they're among my favorite you know sports uh, arcadey games out there and I don't like sports game but this 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 is part of my yeah, childhood somehow so I love the SSX games I've never played this one by the way uh, so but it's sealed so I'm not gonna open it up um, but yeah I would I would love to try it at some point we'll we'll see we'll see I mean maybe the flea market still has like a few copies on the side um, that are uh, yeah for sale for cheap so maybe I'll grab it and try it on my original Xbox next again they're all from the same seller by the way all three dot three thousand one so all like around two dollars something so we have rally fusion uh, never played this uh, again not a racing game fan I used to be uh, but I grew out of this uh, fantasy <laughs> so I don't like racing games too much uh, so this is from Activision uh, again I don't have much to say about it just showing you the wonderful Korean release of this which is still sealed next we have Minority Report uh, based on the game with uh, based on the game based on the movie with Tom Cruise uh, which I thought was a decent film I need to maybe watch it again reminded me a bit of Robocop kind of like it, it looked like it could have been in the same uh, universe or something uh, I don't know maybe it was it was just like the costume design and everything like reminded me of Robocop anyway uh, this is the again South Korean release as you can see not much not much to say about it it's an Activision game um, so yeah a couple of screenshots on the back Looks like a cool action game, but yeah, again, made in Singapore. This time you just put a sticker, but for Korea only. Another movie-based game. This time we have Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. I think this game was horrible. Um, I remember it back in the days, I think around 2004, five. This came out maybe six. Uh, I was working in a place where they had DVDs, VHS, and this was the kind of like a uh, bargain bin title. Uh, yeah, Ubisoft. I mean, whatever. I mean, it's kind of cool because you know the film was was good. Um, so yeah, we have the game here. Is it any good? I don't know. I probably never know because it's sealed and I'm not going to open it up. Uh, it's just cool to keep have the wonderful like Hangul on the. Uh, the title this time around you know usually they put the the original title in English just like the previous game right minor rep minority report in like big but underneath in small you have the Korean title but this time around they they did you know the Hangul in big and the English title smaller which is kind of cool it looks more like a, an import right okay the last well we have two more games related to movies not that I you know it, it was a choice it's just like those games happen to be sealed and I grabbed them but we have Enter the Matrix which by the way didn't know was written and directed by the Warshawski brothers I mean the directors the, of the original movies I didn't know they participated in the game uh, so that's new to me which is kind of cool uh, released by Atari again it's sealed um, and yeah it has like that cool glowy uh, you know reflective cover probably the same with the US release I mean it's a it's really cool it's it's really nicely done um, I don't know if the game is any good I think one of the matrix game was good but I can't remember if it was enter the matrix that was the good one or the other one I think there were like two or three games um, so yeah there you go okay uh, this is almost the last game 
Uh, we have the Lord of the Rings. I said, you know, previously, yeah, there were like a bunch of Lord of the Ring games. Uh, this is another one I picked up, Lord of the Rings, the third age uh, for the original Xbox. Again, this one is sealed. It came out from uh, Nambu. I, I picked this up at Nambu. I think they charged me a little bit more because it was sealed. I mean, I'm like, yeah, whatever. It was perhaps just uh, something like seven, eight dollars. Why not? So there you go with the original electron EA, electronic art uh, hologram right there. So really cool. Okay, the final game, nothing special. By the way, there's no order in the way I showed you all the games, but here is Zapper. I don't think very highly of this game. I don't know. It's probably just a cute kitty platformer style. Uh, nothing too too amazing about it. I, I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe the game is really fun to play. Um, but yeah, anyway, it was cheap. Once again, that was I picked this up in the flea market uh, for uh, something like three dollars sealed. I mean, it's super cool. By the way, I'm I'm surprised I can still find these games sealed in the flea market. But you know what? Everywhere in South Korea, like you have some stores or the flea market or whatever, when, whenever you see these games sealed, it's always this kind of assortment of 10 games. And it's always the same goddamn 10 games. Yeah, like I won't find it, say, Robocop or I, I don't know, like any other titles, but it's always Zapper, um, Enter the Matrix, uh, Minority Report, uh, what else? Fusion, maybe Unreal Championship One. Yeah, I've seen that a couple times. Um, Spectrum Warriors. Uh, yeah, it's always those, always the same titles. Uh, except this one was a bit of a different surprise. I didn't see this one uh, before. Anyway, Zapper is a common one in South Korea, and I say that until they're all gone. I used to say that about Zillernet, which is a Korean exclusive game made by a Korean company, which is super cool. Although it's a karaoke game with some Korean songs, so if you're not Korean, if you don't have a mic, uh, this game is kind of a bit useless, uh, but it's really fun to have as uh, an exclusive, right? Uh, although also the cover art is nothing fancy. I showed it to you in the past. I mean, there used to be a ton of them in the wild, sealed. But now the store that used to have a bunch of them ran out of copies. I mean, they're all sold out. So I'm guessing it's gonna, same thing will happen with these eventually. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you, because this video is quite long, of course, is uh, one thing I found in the flea market. and. I mean, I always talk about Xbox, but I found this beautiful PlayStation 2, which is um, apparently it was made for the 50 million uh, copies, I mean copies, releases of the PS2. So they, they, they sold 50 million units and then they made this special edition of the PS2, which is called the Aqua Blue. I was, I was trying to figure out, like, is it blue? What? But yeah, it's the Aqua Blue. Uh, which is in beautiful shape. I fired it up, I plugged it in, and uh, it plays wonderfully. I mean, it's, it, you know, no, no issues whatsoever. I try to clean it up and everything. It's, it's beautiful. And I found that in the flea market, uh, and it does have a hard drive. Uh, I mean, the port for the hard drive. Sadly, there's no hard drive inside. I need to buy one. Um, let me just show you with the, uh, the specs on the side. As you can see, it's SCPH. Five, uh, 50,005 um, so yeah which is the special edition PlayStation 2 model um, but the cool thing is not only this I mean okay by the way I paid I, I like to show you how much I paid because you know it's it's kind of the part of the fun here is you know going for a hunt and buying these things and I, actually I'm telling you about the prices I pay for these things because I'm not selling them anyway so I, I'm not going to frustrate anyway, anyone saying, hey, I only pay this and then resell it for big money. Uh, I keep these things. So I paid this one, uh, Imanon. Um, Imanon in South Korea is 20,001. 20,001. Uh, last time I checked yesterday was $15.35. So I paid $15.35 for this PS2. And also it came with its original Aqua Blue memory card 8 megabyte my god i'm gonna die with eight megabytes uh, but yeah it's so cool like 
again I cleaned it up so the uh, memory card and surprisingly also it came with not one but two controllers and by the way they look very clean and that's because I unscrewed them all I you know they, they took a bath I, I cleaned everything up uh, because they were a bit like nasty uh, but now they're like nice and shiny so there you go you have the two controllers you have um, the original memory card and the beautiful special edition um, PlayStation 2 aqua blue I mean this is this is great um, anyway I, I just need to find you know the connector that connects to the TV and um, yeah I will be able to I, I by the way you, you might be wondering like yeah you buy that like just to display at home whatever no I'm not I'm not into like console collecting because it takes up a lot of space and as you know I'm selling videotapes and that takes a hell lot of space in my room uh, but I just bought it to actually use the hard drive because apparently this is very hard to uh, very hard very easy to hack if you want to put some ROMs and play like some old school games and this is the only reason I bought that I didn't go like for like oh it's a special edition no, no I kind of just went for like oh I want the PS2 fat model with the hard drive and it just happened to have this whole set for 20,001 $15.35 so it was a uh, very hard to pass by okay so guys thank you very much this video has been way too long already I hope you'll have a wonderful week next time that I have some games to show you I'm, I won't wait until I have like 300 games to show you I'll wait for like maybe 10 and then I'll make a little video or maybe even just five because um, uh, those long videos are not uh, ideal so anyway that said thank you very much if you like this video give it a give it a thumbs up uh, of course you can write down some comments if you have something you're wondering about some prices maybe some stuff that maybe I can find in South Korea you want to let me know about something that is very rare or whatnot just say hello uh, this is always welcome and of course uh, if you can subscribe that is the best so have a great week everyone and see you again on the next one